do you have one of these, one of these, one of these, and you're replacing it with one of these because you'd rather your router be one of these or even one of these or any other router system you want to use with 5G modem technology? And you got it home, you got it set up, plugged it in, super simple to set up, and the speeds weren't quite what you're getting out of the other device. Hopefully, they're better, but if they weren't quite what you were getting out of the other device, there is still some settings and things that you can do to optimize that speed connection. On these routers, gateway router systems that are from the carriers, they're specifically designed and set up for a narrow set of bands. So they don't have as much support for all the cellular bands out there, both LTE as well as 5G. This, on the other hand, supports every single band in the US market and also bands around the world. All the LTE bands that are available today, all the 5G standalone and non-standalone bands that are available for all the major cellular carriers, you can access them on this device. So what does that mean that this might be faster than this? Well, at its most basic level, it's possible because Maybe that one device is connecting to some of your faster bands at your specific location, whereas the Invisigig is connecting to the first available or the strongest band that it can find, either LTE or 5G standalone, or both LTE with 5G non-standalone. Now, there are many reasons why that could mess with your speeds on your connection, just having access to more bands. Is it possible that this system from the carrier is faster than the Invisigig put side to side using the exact same SIM card. Yeah, it's possible. The technology inside the Invisigig modem itself is the top tier of what's available. But these carrier devices are also fine-tuned specifically for that carrier by the carrier by a very large group of very smart, knowledgeable people. That said, the devices themselves overall, aren't always what people want to use, specifically for their Wi-Fi system in their house and their routing system. Sometimes people want to use something that's a little more up to date. It's got a little bit newer technology to it, but ne doesn't necessarily have the latest 5G to it. Or maybe you don't want to completely replace your entire system just to get updated to 5G. That's where the Invisigig comes in. Add 5G to the system you already own. Again, if this thing is doing super well for you and it's supplying all of your needs and it's doing the complete home package job for you, then you don't really need the Invisigig. It's already doing the job for you. We'd love for you to buy the Invisigig, but we're not going to tell you you need it if this is doing its job for you because you don't. But again, if you're a little bit more advanced and you're using switches and routers and whole home systems, that don't come with 5G connectivity, then the Invisigig is definitely the solution for you. Okay, so let's look at an example. Right here, I've got a phone connected to T-Mobile. We're gonna log in, and over the phone connection, you'll see that it's not connected to Wi-Fi, if it'll focus. Not connected to Wi-Fi, and it's getting about 136 down. Here at this location, anywhere from two to 300 is gonna be the max, it's currently Saturday afternoon, so there's probably a lot of people on the cell tower. You have to know that everybody's single location is different. Your speeds are not going to be the same as someone else's speeds that you saw online. Your speeds may not even be the same as your neighbor next door. So it's very important to know what it is that you're getting at your specific location and how you're getting it, even more importantly, how you're getting it. So I'll run a new speed test on my phone app. It says it's on 5G UC and getting about 200 down. Okay, let's see if I can get it to focus here. Okay, so that's on the phone. But let's test on my connection through Invisigate. The Invisigig is currently connected to a GLINet Flint router via Wi-Fi. 
I'm sorry, all via Ethernet. And then I'm connected on my laptop here to the Flint router over 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 Wi-Fi. So with the speedtest.net Windows app on my laptop, I'll run a speed test. And I've got the Invisigig set up in a way that a lot of people may experience out of the box. I had to actually change my settings to make this happen because here at my location, the Invisigig chose all the best stuff. It doesn't always happen that way, so I had to make it do it for an example. You see here, though, I'm only getting 43 down. Now, how is it that on my phone, I'm getting 200, uh, 185 down, two up, band 41. On my phone, I'm getting 185 down on the T-Mobile line. The Invisigig is actually using a T-Mobile home internet SIM, and it's getting 43 down. Why is that? And some people are going to say that it's the difference in the plans and so forth. And that can be for some things. But in this particular case, it's the bands that we're using on the Invisigig. Okay. So huge difference in speeds. So let's go to our Invisigig and log in. If we look here on the, the live signal information, we'll see here that I've got terrible signal power, first of all. That's never good. Okay. And then I'm only connected to LTE bands. I'm not even using 5G. Some people do actually experience the best speeds, 200, 300 megabits or better on LTE only and worse speeds on 5G. So you might have the best scenario only using LTE. You might not. Here at this location, as you can see, using LTE only bands, this one being on 66 and 12 for two times carry aggregation, it is not the best. If I run a speed test while looking at the live signal strength and all the stats, you can watch the metrics change, bounce around, do whatever. And sometimes you'll even see another band come into play. Maybe it'll do a 3x carry aggregation on LTE. But overall, that's the best I'm getting at this location. Now, what if we take the network mode, which is currently set to only allow LTE and standalone 5G, and let's make it do standalone and non-standalone. So now it's capable of doing LTE with non-standalone 5G, LTE only, and standalone 5G without LTE. All right. The system is actually going to reboot so that it can change the radio. And then hopefully, sometimes it'll reconnect. Sometimes it, it won't do it. If it does want to do a reconnect, just give it time. It'll come back. We'll go back to our live signal. And now you can see I'm actually connected to LTE and 5G with band 2 as the primary LTE carrier and band 41 as the 5G secondary aggregated carrier. When you're on LTE plus 5G, it uses LTE as the primary, what's called an anchor band. That's the first primary connection point. And then it uses 5G as a secondary aggregate band for increased performance. Set up in this way, if we run a speed test, at this particular location, we'll see what kind of speeds we get. 70, 80, 90, a little better, right? And we're going to go back to the phone a little bit here and see that we had the 185 on the phone. Now, how do we know what the phone's using? Is it using LTE only? Is it using 5G only? Is it using LTE plus 5G? Depending on the phone you have, you can go into a maintenance mode or service mode. And there's ways to see what bands you're using on here. But we're not going to do that's outside the scope of this video. So we're not going to do that. But there are ways to see what bands you're using on your phone. And that's an even better tool to further find your best speeds. But in this particular case, you see my best speed here was 132 on the laptop, whereas I'm, I'm getting better than that on the phone. I could run it again. Maybe it's just a, a lower speed blip. Maybe I can get a faster speed on one or the other. But we're just going to assume that's it for now. Now you see that 
It also aggregated in band 66, so we have now LTE band 2, LTE band 66, and 5G band 41. But what happens if we lock it to only do standalone? Which it will do standalone on its own if it decides, the modem itself decides that that band standalone is the way to go. It'll attach to it. At times, mine will attach to just 5G standalone. Currently, we've got it set so it doesn't do that. We're going to choose 5G only. And what that does is only allows it to do the 5G standalone bands. And you see here it's, it's resetting. Whenever it's sitting here saying reconnecting, you can just give it a second. Eventually, it'll come back on its own. If it does not, it will say something like press enter to reconnect. You can do that. Worst case, reload the browser page. And if you'll notice, I'm using an incognito browser tab, browser whole browser window, actually. I always open a fresh new browser window every single time I interface any of my modems or routers. And if I'm reloading something, I don't reload the page. I close the browser window altogether, and then I open a brand new incognito browser page window tab, however you want to say it. The reason is sometimes there's browser cache that gets stuck in there and does the weirdest things with the interface, especially when you do software updates, firmware updates, anything like that. There could be something that's stuck in that browser cache left over. We don't want that. So we've allowed it a little bit of time to come back up. Sometimes you'll see a thing that says reconnecting pop up. That could be just a system thing that it's doing at the moment. It'll come back. If it doesn't, worst case, power down. Give it about 10 seconds. Power back up. Give it a full couple of minutes to completely reset up, reconnect, and then try to access it again. So we're going to log back in. Use your password that you've set or the default password, which is in the quick setup guide as well as the user guide. And now we're going to go to the live signal page again. And now you see we're using standalone 5G bands only. In this particular case, I'm on 71 and 41. So we'll see what are the speeds here. 71 is, being, is the primary band. We'll see here primary. And the secondary band is 41. Now you'll notice, again, not getting the speeds I was getting on my phone. 83, 85, 85 down. That's not 185, 200 down, right? The phone was getting 185. Why is this not getting it? Well, we're not done. In this particular case, there's a chance that one of those bands is not good. And this is a further troubleshooting step. We'll exit out of here, and now we're going to look at band locks. So I know that I'm only on standalone 5G, so I'm going to choose that. And you'll see here all of the bands that are available, and the ones that are currently set are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this whole row. And remember, I was on 71 and 41. So we're going to paste that in, but we're going to take out 71. I know for a fact at this site, again, this is my site, totally different for your site or maybe the same, but for my site, 71 is terrible for speeds. It might be good for general connectivity, but for speeds, it's terrible. So we're going to eliminate 71 and leave every other band in there. We leave the format the same with colons in between every number, no colon at the beginning and no colon at the end, only between the band numbers. I deleted 71, press enter. It says that that's what it's going to lock it to. We're going to press enter. When you band lock, the modem does not reset. It's instant. So if we go into live signal right now, you'll see that 71 is now gone. Now its primary band is 25. And secondary is 41. Let's run that speed test again. And that's better. 167, 168, 170. That's the fastest we've seen yet by quite a bit. And probably much closer to what our phone is doing. So now I'm going to jump back on my phone. While using my phone, we'll see what kind of speeds we get here on the phone.
120, 121, 125, 126. So the phone's not going to get the best speed every single time. But it's still faster than everything except for what we just got on the Invisigig and the speed that we had before. So you see the speeds will fluctuate, go up and down. But you'll see that the one that I got, just got on the Invisigig is in par with what's on the phone. So I found a combination of technology as well as bands that are the best for my Invisigig solution. But it wasn't that way from the start. Yours might be. But if, again, if you notice that this guy is faster than this guy, then there's a chance that you just need to play with the bands. Let's see what the uh, speed test does again. 145-ish, 146, still fast. Let's see here, faster than the last speed test. Faster than that last speed test on the phone. Let's run two speed tests at the same time. Same time, same location, phone SIM versus the Invisigig using the T-Mobile home internet SIM and running the speed test at the same time, the Invisigig was faster. So you can optimize the Invisigig to your specific exact location's needs. Remember, not every site is the same. You're not gonna be able to have the exact same settings as everyone else. The Invisigig is advanced, has lots of features, that can be used for all different carriers. It has access to all the bands that are available today as of the making of this video. And so it's capable. Sometimes we just need to guide it. As the creators of the Invisigig, it's currently not really possible for us to make something that automatically picks up all of your best bands and just makes it fast for you for you. And that's mostly because we're completely unlocked and open to all carriers. So there's no one size fits all solution. Knowing this information is the most powerful tool that you can have for your setup. Let's do a streaming video test. Jumped up to about 2.30 there. So we went up to 2.30, came down to 180, 160, 140. This is for streaming speeds. You can stream to a good number of devices in 4K if you wanted to just using the one Invisigate connection. And again, this is over a Wi-Fi 6 connection to a router before it hits the Invisigig. We're not connected directly to the Invisigig, which you can do for your testing and your setup. We're connected over Wi-Fi from our laptop to a Wi-Fi router that is using the Invisigig for an internet input via Ethernet. Well, hopefully that makes sense. You want to use some good, powerful routers instead of the stuff that comes with the cell carriers hardware. So you grabbed you an Invisigig, you wanted to get the most speeds out of it. Now you've got the tools to better hone down into getting those speeds that your cell carrier can give to you at your location. And now you've got the ability to put that 5G speed into the router of your choice instead of being locked to one of their systems. My name's Richard with the Wireless Haven and Invisigig. If you have any questions or you have any input for the Invisigig, you can reach out to us anytime directly on the Invisigig website at invisigig.com slash support. And you can also email us at info at invisigig.com.